Chad, we ready? Okay. I don't know how we get the attention of everybody. but So if we could all come in and we'll try to go ahead and get started. This may be the only time that our classes actually get started at 9 o'clock, but, but if we can get started, that will be good. So, and I know we'll have folks that will be coming in and y'all just come in and join us and and so we are very appreciative of you giving up your class time to be able to come and join us for a discussion of family time here for us to, to discuss a very important decision that we're going to make here at Levy. And we want to receive feedback. We want to have an opportunity to be able to visit with you. But we are embarking on and, and evaluating an addition to our building. And this is something that we have started discussing months ago among the eldership, where we really sat down and, and we have prayed about it. We have had some very, very good discussion among the eldership as we embarked on the question of, do we need to increase our, our space here? And is this the right time for Levy? Is this the right thing for Levy? Is this what God would like for us to do here at Levy? And so we spent time. We spent time in prayer in asking God to give us heavenly wisdom and for the Spirit to lead us in a decision that is the right decision for Levy. And we've also spent time where we have, as an eldership, developed a vision of why we feel and we competently feel that God has led us in a direction that an addition to our building is needed and this is the right time for Levy. And we want to share that vision with you here this morning. We've had the opportunity to share it with the staff and also with the deacons, and we felt like that was very good discussion. What we encourage and what we want is to have good communication so that we can receive feedback in regard to the vision, and that what we're hopeful for in the end, that this vision will be collectively a vision for Levy, that we can all support as we move forward. I want to share with you a verse that as we were going through our discussion early on, someone gave, um, uh, gave this verse for us to consider. And it's Proverbs 19.21, and it reads, Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that will prevail. So just think about that. That became foundational for us in all of our discussions that we had, that many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that will prevail. So as we were having our discussions, we wanted to make sure, and all of our prayers was centered around, is this the Lord's will? Is this God's will for us to move forward with a building addition, or is it something that we just feel like that we need to do that may not be in the best interest of the family here at Levy? And we prayed over this verse. And some of our prayers was also, is if this is not God's plan for us, that he will defeat us in this and that we will not move forward. And so what I'd like to do this morning is just stop now and as a family for us to, to pray over this verse as well. So let's, let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we just come before you as this family. Dear God, we just want to do your will. Dear God, at this time, we continue to pray for your wisdom to direct us as a family. Dear God, we just pray that we will always humbly accept your will. And dear God, we just pray that, and we pray knowing, dear God, that you will give us the right thing to do in this, in this instance, dear God, as we contemplate adding to our building here, dear God, and we pray, dear God, that we will be in step with, with your will. And dear God, if, the, if it is your will that we continue with our building and we add to our building here, dear God, we just pray that it will be an instrument that will be used, dear God, to, to, serve, to serve you by serving our community and to being able to reach out and to show your Son, Jesus Christ, to the community that we live in, but also to help us as a family here to grow closer to you. 
But dear God, it's also our, our prayer this morning that if it's not your desire for us to move forward with the building addition, that dear God, you will redirect us in what we should do. Dear God, I just pray for a spirit of unity as we go through this process. And dear God, we just pray that we will be able to feel your presence, dear God, and we will always look to, to you and how to handle the situations that come our way in the spirit of, of love and unity, and we will always be peacemakers through this process. Dear God, thank you so much for this family here at Levy, for how you have blessed us. And dear God, we just pray that you will continue to bless us. But also, dear God, that as we receive these blessings, that we will always give you the glory and honor and praise. In Christ's holy name, amen. So I do want to share with you the different components of our, of our vision that we have gone through. And then we do want to solicit your feedback. And we want to hear from you because we've had some very good conversations with the staff and with the deacons. And that's what we want to hear because we do know that everyone has their own opinions and we want to, to hear from you. you know, our very first foundational vision really goes back to our mission statement, building a strong family for the glory of God. But let's just be honest, you know, a building addition really is just bricks and mortar. So if you kind of think of it from that standpoint, a building addition could be used as an instrument to bring glory to God. Or it could be that a building addition could bring glory to ourselves. It really is how, our, how we look at it. What's our intent? What's our purpose? Is our purpose for the building addition to be an instrument to serve others, to be used as all the different ministries that we have? Or is it strictly just a convenience for us? You know, if we step back and look at our facilities that we are blessed to have today, then we can and competently say that our facilities are used, are used for the glory of God. With all the ministries that we have, it's an instrument, but it is used for, for the glory of God. One of our other tenets to our, to our vision is a building addition is a show of faith in our future, our younger members, and our young leaders. It really is a show of faith in anything that we do. But if you think about Levy, we are blessed so much between the demographics that we have here. We have, we have the young, we have the old, and God has just blessed us with a great cross-section. And then with all of our young families that we have, they are so active and they're so involved and all of our young leaders that are coming there, the future is so bright for Levy that it really is a show of faith in our future. You know, I was talking to Kevin Kuhn about this particular aspect of our, of our vision, and we talked about, you know, unfortunately within our brotherhood, there are a lot of congregations that are just aging, that they are getting older, that if the vision would be to let's build a new building addition to attract young families to come in. That's a build it and they will come. You know, this is our vision is, is that we have blessed with young families and also families that continue to come to Levy, that it's a great opportunity for us to be able to utilize our facilities in such a way that will help others that come in, but also to serve our young families that are here today. Also, another component of our vision is a building addition will allow for greater opportunities for service and ministry to our members and the community. So if you would just think back to me, think back with me, before we had our educational facility and we had what we affectionately call our maze. Y'all all remember when we when we had the maze. Even Dwayne Kale, I thought he remembered the maze. I didn't realize he was as old as he is. But, you know, you think back to when we had the maze. And so it was very obvious when we had the maze. It served us well, but it was very obvious that we needed our new education facility 
to be able to, to serve us in that capacity. Also think back with me before we had our ministry center and we had our Bob, our building out back. You know, it probably wasn't as obvious at the time that we needed our new ministry center. But think back today in regard to the ministries that are in place today and then think back before we had these facilities and just think about all the new ministries that we have. Think about all the thousands of folks that have been touched by these facilities. Now, the facilities are, would be nothing. We could build new facilities and they could sit empty. But because we have such an active family here that wants to serve, then we've taken those facilities, and to the glory of God, then we've been able to utilize and bring new ministries that, that we would not have any idea. I mean, God has blessed us so much with all these new ministries, more than we could even imagine. And we really feel that God's leading us that the same thing will happen in regard to our building addition. That we will look back, you know, years from now, and look back and say, hey, we were really able to utilize these facilities to serve others in ways that we can't even imagine at, at this time. Also, I think that if we never should lose sight of the fact of why we're here, say that again, that we are here in this community for a reason. You know, we, before we built our educational facility, million dollars or so, then we said, okay, should we invest the money here in this location or we could take that money and invest it somewhere else? That was about a two-minute conversation that we are here, we are invested in this community, and I think that we have been blessed because of a lot of reasons, but I think that because of that reason, God has blessed us with that because I believe that it attracts those individuals that are like-minded that want to serve this community. And that was a huge statement for our community, that we are invested in this community and this building addition will just be one additional step to say that we are definitely committed to this community and to be able to use our facilities then for serving our community as well. Another component of our vision is building, a building addition will not impact any funding of current or future ministries, nor burden the Levy family with a large debt. You know, anytime you embark on any decision, whether it's with your family or with your church family, finances are always a consideration. So as we were going through our discussions, then someone in the group said, well, what about if, if money was taken off the table? What about if money was not an obstacle? If we just didn't consider money at all, is this the right decision for Levy at this time? You know, and that really put it in the proper perspective at that time. Is this the right thing to do? Because if it is the right thing to, get, to do, then... God will bless us with the money. He always has, and He always will. And so as we kind of think about that, then the commitment is that we will not utilize any funds that, in addition to the funds that are currently used to fund our existing debt now. Right now, we have about $900,000 of debt on our whole facility. Now, we paid that down from, I don't know, $1.3 million or somewhere in there. So we've been very blessed, and that's about $120,000 per year in our debt funding. So our commitment is that we can borrow up to $2 million, spread that out over 30 years, and then that will not increase our funding, but will remain at the $120,000. Now, $2 million is a lot of money, is a lot of money. And there is no one more debt adverse than me. 
I'm about as cheap and tight as they come. You can just ask my family. And so, I mean, I am. I am. I am. I'm wound pretty tight when it comes to those kind of things. So when we say $2 million, that is a, a lot of money. But just consider with me, a, well, let me back up. In thinking about this family talk, I've thought a lot about Jolly Pace. I know a lot of you know Jolly. You love Jolly. There was no one that loved Levy more than Jolly Pace. And I remember one day when Jolly came in and said we had made our very last payment on this auditorium here today. He was so excited about we were debt free. But you know, you think about that and we are the recipients here today of Jolly and Mr. Blevins and others that had faith in the Levy congregation to step out and borrow $900,000 back in 1975 to be able to have what we have here today where we can sit in our auditorium and not owe anything on, on this auditorium here today. I think that kind of puts it in perspective that it was the right thing to do in 1975, and God blessed us with be able to pay it off in that 20 years or so. And it's our blessing or our hope and our prayer that this $2 million will be paid off. And I hope a whole lot quicker than 20 years, because I want to be around to really enjoy and have that excitement like we had when Jolly was able to present to us that we were debt free. Also, our building addition will not diminish the monies that are currently allocated to funding evangelistic ministries. You know, we all know and we're well versed in the amount that's given every year for Harvest Sunday. And we are so blessed to, to have those funds that are available. But also, in our weekly contributions, we fund a number of evangelistic ministries here that come out of our regular weekly contributions. So with that, once again, our commitment is we are going to continue to fund those and a building addition will not have any impact on those evangelistic ministries. Also, we're committed to funding of new community ministries. You know, we're starting our, and Mark Deal has started our warming shelter. That's just an example of, of new ministries that we have. We want to make sure that our focus is, is that we are focusing on ministry while we're going through the building addition. That we're not focusing just on bricks and mortar, but our focus needs to be on the ministries that's associated with our facilities that we have here. And also our building addition will provide an opportunity to grow in the gift of giving by providing an opportunity to participate in funding of the building addition. You know, we are blessed here at Levy with a number of individuals who really have the gift of giving. The congregation as a whole, I mean, we are so blessed that we give as a congregation. And that is, that is wonderful. And God and our, is blessed by that, by the ones that we're able to serve. But we also want to use this as an opportunity for those to, for us to promote, for us to encourage individuals to really participate so that we can take our debt and we can pay it down very, very quickly. And we believe that that will happen. But what we're going to do is we're, once again, we're committed that we're not going to allow any of our ministries to go unfunded or anything along those lines. We're committed to not increase our annual debt payments associated with the, with the building addition there. You know, I talked about Jolly Pace, and I've been thinking a lot about Jolly. Jolly was a very special person to me, as you can tell, and we've been blessed to be at Levy for 32 years. And I remember when we had first came, and I'd come down and lead prayers or whatever, and I was scared to death, even more scared than I am today, and Jolly would be the, he would be the first person that would come down and 
And I never can you know, forget what he would tell me. He would say, young man, now I don't hear that anymore about any young man, but he would say, young man, you just did a great job. Jolly was the encourager. And you couldn't be around Jolly very long without him speaking to the unity and the peace at Levy. He would pray about it. He would speak to it. But he lived it out. That was Jolly Pace. You know, and I do think that some of those things have been passed on. And so we do enjoy that spirit of unity and peace here at Levy. And we should never take that for granted. We should pray for that all the time, that that is maintained here at Levy. But any time that we enter into any type of building addition or anything like that, it will test our unity. It just will. Everyone's going to have an opinion on whether this classroom ought to be here or there or this group ought to be here or there or wherever. I would just like for us to think back, you know, what Jolly would tell us. In the end, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether, you know, this classroom is here or there or wherever. What we need to remember is that whatever we do, we do it to the glory of God. And so in the end, that's what we need to be, is all peacemakers as we go through this process, as we are stretched a little bit, a little, you know, tested in regard to our unity, that we need to remember that. And also, when we're in the middle of our building addition, and we can't park where we normally park, or our classroom's in a different spot, or we had to combine classrooms, and we had some inconveniences coming our way, then the normal thing is going to be for us to say is, why in the world are we going through this building addition anyhow? Well, what I'd like for us to do is when those thoughts come, and they will come, that we step back and we say, okay, this is what we all agreed upon. You know, this was our vision that we had, the reasons that we're going through our building addition. And that's why it's so important that we take the time now and that we tease out and we discuss the vision and, and all of us have an opportunity to say, why are we embarking on this building addition? Is it the right thing for Levy and at this time? And I think that will really help us as we go through this process. We are not in a hurry. We want to take our time to make sure that we really spend our time on, our, on the vision and make sure everyone is committed. Or if you're not committed, then an opportunity to visit with us about that. Talk to us about, about your concerns. We will, at some point, form a committee that will help us facilitate the building addition, but we hadn't even formed that committee yet. We're just waiting to make sure we go through the right processes at this time. So all of you are probably thinking this is a family talk, but Mike's doing all the talking. Well, I'm going to, I hope we're going to provide some opportunities for if anyone has any comments or questions, then Bill's going to field all those answers for us. So, <laughs> see, I slid that one in on him there, but, but we are going to, we're going to open it up for any questions that you may have or any comments, but we all know that this is probably not the most conducive way to be able to do that. We want to be better communicators, um, and it's something that we really have to work on, and we know that a lot of the best communication is one-on-one, -on -one, and we're going to try to be proactive in that communication. But we're going to open it up for questions, and then Bill is then going to share with us the preliminary plans that we have at this time so that you can kind of get a, a feel then for what we're looking at. Appreciate Jonathan Rogers. He has spent hours in working with our architect to be able to come up to this point at this point in time with this. So appreciate that, Jonathan, in helping us with, with that. So with that, we will open it up. Anyone have any, any questions or comments? Often and, and this will probably answer your question then, Dalton. Uh, 
Um, I, I asked uh, uh, what would be useful and where would it be located? Excellent question. Uh, over where our drive through is, if you, if you always come in on this side of the building and you never go to the other side of the building, you'll have to go over here to see where it's going to be. Uh, right over where the drive through is, the existing drive through will be taken down. The entrance that's there now will be changed dramatically, uh, and there will be a three-story building erected there. We, I thought that it might be good to say to you before we start too far along is we cannot go that way unless we went to our parking lot and build. The city has what used to be the old railroad right of way, and it extends 40 feet into what looks like our property. There is also a, a big concrete storm drain that is there that prohibits us from going through there. Uh, we're limited to some degree about how far we can go this way, also because of the city right of way with Martin Drive. Now we're in the process of trying to acquire some more property so that we can uh, at least make part of Martin Drive go away. That way we can go on and maybe purchase some more property and do something. So right now we are kind of limited to where we can go with the property. Uh, anyway, uh, no, this is not... Uh, very bright, but as you can see, that is the, the first floor. Down in the middle, the lower part down here, where those, those are columns, which would be another drive-through, a one lane instead of a two. So that's extended in front of the office building uh, out there and away from the building now. Uh, a little further up, you see that round area there. That is a sidewalk where it's got the, the little uh, imprints, what look like, kind of maybe look like gravel down through there. Inside of that is somewhat of a garden. And the reason we have that is because uh, the city is not going to let us get up into that right away. We're going as far as we can. Maybe later we can come back out there and uh, do something else. But that will be what we would consider the main entrance. That's the first, uh, the first floor. Now, I'm opening it back up to your questions at that point. All right. Let's go to the second floor. Oh, excuse me, Tom. Uh, let's let's go through. I'll try to make that more plain. Let's let's kind of go through. We got the first floor. This is the second floor. I probably should have started with what's on the tail end. Is what I'm trying to say instead of what we started with. This is the second floor. Obviously, it sits up on top of the first floor. <laughs> go ahead to the third floor. I might come back if we have time. I'm. <laughs> Where does the third floor sit? The question. He is in communications. He's not in building. Third floor. I'll explain a little bit about the third floor. Uh, we have the option in any of these floors actually to have partitions in there to make it either wide open or a number of classrooms. What you see on this third floor. Uh, is that these are partitions that are the walls inside of there uh, as such they can be opened up and that become uh, one room one of the things that we're having struggles with right now with room is our youth they don't have a big enough place to for all of them to get together unless it's out there in the middle of the gym floor and uh, that's not too conducive to what uh, Jesse and Rachel want to do there and so one of our ideas is to maybe for them to be able to at least part-time be able to use uh, that area at least on a Wednesday night basis so they can get together in that. It also could be used for various other things. It also could be on the second floor as well uh, as the third floor. 
Okay, go on if you would, please. A lot of times, it's uh, better to see an elevation view, and that's what this is. If you were standing on this parking lot, looking back this way, as I'm standing here, this is more or less what you would see. As you can see, this part that juts out, as I said, there are columns that have uh, the drive-through in them. You can see inside of there, there's doors. That would be an entryway that you go in. We have uh, these doors that we come in over here now. Those would be replaced by the doors that you see. They would be further out than these doors. Where those doors are now would be restrooms. Things would change up as far as that goes. If you look, if I'm, I'm gonna point right back over this column, you see that fire extinguisher on the wall? Right outside of there would be these restrooms, okay? Kind of give you some perspective on it. So if you, it would, it would all extend out that way. What extends out that way on this, this close to where we are would be that entryway and those restrooms. And then a little bit further over would be the entrance that goes into our classrooms. Okay, the next picture if you would, Chad. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, that just shows an interior uh, view. Uh, again, if you're standing where I'm standing and you were looking that way, that's what you would see. That's, that's what's shown there. Obviously, there's a set of stairs that goes into that three-story building. Let's look at the next one. They get worse as we go. That's kind of looking from the other direction back this way if you were standing out there in it looking back. Go ahead and move on. That, that gives you a little bit of a, of a perspective. Looking over to the right as such, if you were standing out there on that parking lot looking now, you would see our existing educational building. We move it that way. It goes that way. There will be less space between this building and an office building. About half or more than half. Okay, go ahead. Go, go back to the first floor. Questions that you have about the first floor. That's debatable. Uh, eight, 12, something of that nature. 9,000 square feet, is that right, Jonathan, in the classrooms? 13,000 square feet total. 3,000 square feet in a footprint as such. Then going up uh, two more stories, be 9,000, and in that area that's in the middle, the entryway. Yes, sir, Scott. Uh, I don't know that I can do that. Uh, and I say that, uh, we, we really haven't made a plan. Uh, this is an ar uh, architect's vision of what he thinks that we need as such. We obviously had some discussion about it, but very, very little in a way. Uh, we're trying to get, make sure that we've got everybody's input. I think it, it's obvious that the bottom floor probably has to be our smaller children's classrooms. We're out of room there too. We need more area for that. So I think that it's, it's probably an obvious thing that that's what's gonna take place on the first floor. As far as the other two floors are concerned, it's kind of open. They will be classrooms. Uh, what goes away, uh, nothing much. A little bit of hallway will have to go away. We'll have to create some hallways. There's a storage room on the second floor that we can go through and make a hallway between our existing building and the new building. We don't really plan on putting in another elevator. We have an elevator now that goes up two floors since that's as high as we go now. We're gonna to try to make that do and, and 
whoever has a, a need, make sure that they're accommodated somehow in the floors that we've got. Anybody over here? Yes. Let me get this back. It's not like what she's saying now would take up a lot of the parking space. What about that? That's a good, a good question. Of course, we have this area that we park on now, our last purchase of the house that it wasn't designated a parking lot, but it became a parking lot pretty quick, cause why? Close to the building, obviously. Uh, we're trying to buy the house on the corner. It is probably in probate, although I don't know that's the case. The people said they have to work through some things. They're gonna sell it to us. Eventually, I think we're going to get that other property that's along Camp Robinson Road there. There's one house left on Martin Drive as you go down through here, property that we don't own. It goes with what's on Camp Robinson Road, and so we'll probably eventually get it. We'll, we've got in mind to pave this area over uh, that we've been parking on, over uh, there to pick up the parking places. We, we believe that we have enough parking places to satisfy the requirements of the city. Uh, some of you, some of us, may have to park further away. I, I'm kind of black and white, so that's it. <laughs> that's, that's what's going to happen. Other questions? Yes, sir, Jason. That's a good, good question. It'll probably take nine months to a year to build it. It'll take another four or five months to get the plans, get the permits, so forth, if we were to start tomorrow. Yes? It's a good, good question. I didn't make that very plain. Uh, her question was, were the, would the teens be moving over there permanently and so forth? And I say, no. They, they're going to have to use what they got, plus they need some more. Great problem to have. Jesse and Rachel and all you young people, thank you. I'm grateful that you're here and grateful that you're a part of this today. Any other questions? I want to share two or three things with you. I don't think you ever get to thinking you're going to be the old guy. Honestly, I don't. Uh, I don't think I'm the old guy. Some of you look, look and you it's, it's obvious to you that I'm not the young guy. I didn't say it was obvious that I'm the old guy, but uh, I've been the young guy as a shepherd, and now I'm the old guy. I was 39 years old uh, when I was first uh, chosen to be a shepherd. Uh, next, or this year, I'll be 69 years old. Uh, I've been around a long time. I've been uh, in a church at Levy since I was a teenager. I didn't grow up here. I grew up at Sylvan Hill. But uh, I've been a, a, a guy that's been here through a lot of stuff. And like Mike, I've had a lot of good mentors. My father-in-law sitting back here is 88 years old. Uh, he's my greatest mentor in life as such. And uh, We've had a, a, a lot of uh, growth. A lot of things have changed uh, at Levy. Uh, I don't think we've had pains, quite honestly. Uh, maybe I choose to forget. Uh, I think, personally, I've lived a, a very charmed life. I had a lot of a lot of things go my way. Uh, Mike and I were up here talking just a minute ago. Uh, 
I wish you guys really knew us. Uh, we ought to work on that. Uh, I've told the guys in our Wednesday night class that I would like for us to have a session to where uh, life stories could be told. We have a lot of great life stories at Levy. Uh, in, in many ways, uh, you are my children. I don't know if you think about that. Many of you obviously are young enough to be my children. But that's the way the shepherds think about this congregation. Uh, we, we think of you as, our, as truly as our family. I've put a lot of time, quite honestly, I'm black and white, a lot of money, into leaving. I've been lucky. I've been blessed. Uh, I think the people that have come through Levy have been blessed by the generosity of people at Levy, by the love more than anything as such. I want to share with you a few things that I wrote down. And I wrote down a lot of stuff because uh, I can be mouthy, you know, wordy. Proverbs 16 also talks about what should be on our heart. Proverbs 16, 1 through 3 and then 9. To man belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the reply of the tongue. There's a lot in that verse that may be a little bit hard even to understand. All a man's ways seem innocent to him, but motives are weighed by the Lord. I hope that you don't ever question the motives of your shepherd. You might question their decisions sometime, but I hope you don't never question the motives because we all have a heart for you. It is our heart's desire to bring you closer to God with the things that we do, not drive you further away. It's an insult to me when somebody leaves this congregation. It hurts me. You know, if they, if they leave mad or hurt or something of that nature. It's never a pleasure uh, for that to take place. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will succeed. Very similar to the verse that Mike used. In his heart a man plans his course but the Lord determines his steps. I've become convinced if you're following the Lord uh, then he's leading you. If your plans. Yes sir. Good, good question. The question is, uh, what are the plans if we're going to grow, and we are, about having more of an auditorium and what size is it now? When this building was built, it was built with a, with a capacity of about 1,100. Uh, pretty much uh, the standard is you, can, you get filled to about 80, 85 percent, and people will quit coming because they don't want to set that close. Uh, Right now, we, we probably could get uh, 900 in here the way it is. We have talked about it. We have talked about the possibility of putting pews back in. We took some out so that we'd have more of an area to congregate, be inviting. And the truth of the matter was, you know the answer to that. We didn't have people to fill them. So uh, we could uh, do that again. Uh, Tim, I don't know that there's a, a good plan for what we could do out there until we get Martin Street, uh, Martin Drive shut down. That's, that's about the only thing I can say about that, about adding to this auditorium. I don't, I don't think we have an answer to that. Yes, sir, Charlie. We certainly have done some work on that, uh, especially Dick Gardner has uh, worked on that. And the city really doesn't have a plan to give us traffic light out there. 
They say it's not justified because of what's there. You know, I, I, I say never say never. No telling what can take place. But we have talked to them about it, so forth. Let me, make, let me try to make this one last point. I think we're out of time already. Uh, who needs a new building addition? I don't need one. Remember that. I got a classroom that's plenty big. I can leave things alone. But if, but if you look around in just a few minutes, who, who's the rest of the people to fill these pews? You'll figure out who needs a building addition. It's the, young, it's the young people, you young families and all. I heard Mr. Blevins say one time, I plan for this to be the last building I'm in on as an elder. Me too. <laughs> Let me give you four points, quotes from our 33, the series that we're in on, uh, the men are in on uh, Wednesday night. Number one, reject passivity. The, uh, these are some quotes. This is from uh, Jim Goodwin. The impossible is often the untried. An Italian proverb, to him who is determined, it remains only to act, uh, to accept responsibility. You cannot accept the responsibility of tomorrow by evading it today. That's from Abraham Lincoln. Uh, lead courageously. Courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyway. That was from the great philosopher John Wayne. And number four, invest eternally. And this is from a guy named Jim Elliott. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. That's a great statement. He is, a, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Thank you for being here this morning. Appreciate it. Yes. Very good. Very true. If I'd have had an hour, I'd have shared a lot of that with you. I'd have shared with you what Jerry Oldridge said to me one time on the parking lot out back, too. You know what? I got a lot invested in leading. Time and money. Isn't that what you said? Thank you.